How long am I supposed to wait? I'm trying to get your husband, Mrs. Powell. Well, where is he? Well, I told you, he's tied up in This a... is an emergency, don't you understand? Well, I'm not supposed to disturb him. What's your name? I want your name. But Mr. Powell told me... I don't care what he said, you little fool. This is an emergency. Would you care to leave a message? There's no time. Well, the meeting should be over soon. Listen to me, you, you teenage idiot. If my husband isn't... If he doesn't come to the phone now, both of you will be responsible for... Mrs. Powell? Mrs. Powell! Uh, Please answer me! Theater 5 presents The Neighbor. Take this. No, I'm all right. It's a beautiful capsule. Lovely orange and gray. I don't need it. Now, the doctor said, come on, Edna. Maybe after I tell you... No takey, no listen. Oh, give it here. Good girl. Comfy now? Oh, cut it out, David. Huh? What'd I do? That tone, I don't like it. I'm not a child. Sorry. I want you to fire that switchboard operator. Miss Marshall was just carrying out my orders. She's a moron. Tell me why you fainted. Don't change the subject. All right, then don't tell me. Look, why did it take you so long to get here? Long? I took a cab just as soon as the doctor called me. How is it that he could reach you when I couldn't? Because the meeting was over by then. Edna, you're the one who insisted we move out here. It had to be Glanville, remember? It's not my fault that this exclusive community is more than two hours from the office. You don't have to beat that story to death. We ought to move. Hmm? I I know my hearing's been affected. Uh, uh, Leave Glenville? Not to the city. Another house. Maybe in the north section. Until now, this house, this neighborhood, your friends, the very ultimate, and now you... I'm frightened. Of what? A chipmunk? We have a new neighbor. Oh, now I see. He's a ditch digger. Oh, you can be nauseating without even trying. I break up an important day. The cab cost me $15. Find that my wife has fainted, is scared silly, wants to leave her dream house because some kook was crazy enough to buy that old monstrosity next door. Oh, come on, Edna. Look, why should a bachelor buy a house with more than 20 rooms? How do you know he's a bachelor? He's alone. Did it ever occur to you that his family may arrive later? He's not married. Did you ask him? No. Have you ever met the man? I saw him. Well, you didn't meet him, talk to him? I wouldn't ever. As he walked up, he turned his face my way. David. Hey, I'm listening. Relax and tell me. He, He doesn't have a face. Let's go back. I thought we had all this settled. There's only one way to run this thing down. We call on our new neighbor, introduce ourselves, welcome him to Glenville. David, my hand, you're squeezing it. It hurts. I just want to make certain that you're with me when we get to the door. I want to go home. You must learn to be neighborly, Edna. His wife may be another sterling recruit for your... Multi-weekly teas, which reminds me, my dear, must you buy those exotic teas reeking with perfume? Here we are. You go in. I'll wait here. Uh, Not on your life. Oh, say, he's he's got a name card up here already. Alexander Naiman. Sounds foreign. Mm. If it isn't Smith, Brown, or Jones, it's foreign. Oh, you know everything, don't you? What about that? Looks as though every light is on in the house. Well, so what? You may not have noticed, but it's a bright, sunny day. Yeah. Oh, well, it's normal when you buy a house to test all the lights. But you don't leave them on. Well, money may not mean anything to the Namans. Uh, you could have used a little more lipstick, dear. I don't like this. I've heard that line before. Nathan. 
maybe he went out. It's a big house. Besides, the lights are on. He's around. I, I've got to get dinner started. You stay right here. You try. He must be here. You may be right at that, Edna. See, the, the garage is empty. I don't think he has a car. Well, he must have. He was walking when he came. Nobody walks anymore. Besides, the dynamic suburb of Glenville's only food store is at least three miles away. <laughs> I can imagine a suburbanite walking six miles for a jar of caviar. <laughs> David! Huh? Oh, I see him. <gasps> Near the second floor window. <gasps> oh, uh, uh, Mr. Naaman? Open up with the Powells from next door. He moved away. Yeah. Probably coming down to open the door. Did you see his... his face? Yeah, well, well no, not, not really. Sort of a shadow, that's all. Do you hear anyone coming? No, not yet. He won't. I know he won't. Well, he saw us. I'm going. No. I don't want to meet him. My skin is crawling already. David, for once, don't be the brave husband. But I'd like to nail this thing down to prove to you that he... You've already earned a medal. Edna, Edna, it's just hit me. Hmm? Oh, no, I'm beginning to sound like you. What are you staring at? The nameplate. Alexander Naaman. The last name. Naaman. Say it in reverse. What are you talking about? Say it, say it. No, man. No, Man. Alexander. No, man. Did you lock all the doors? All except one. I'd hate to think of some poor derelict shivering outside all night. It's only decent to leave a door open so that he I could... see you're back to normal again. That thing with the last name... Only coincidence, Edna. What else could it be? Look out there. At his house. Well, lit up like he's throwing a party. Every light in the place is... David! Well, haven't you ever heard a dog wail? Not like this. I'm staying home tomorrow so that I can prove to you how silly this... Dogs know. They sense danger. Oh, for crying out loud, Edna. Don't you feel it? Oh, come to bed. Come oh, on. I won't be able to sleep. David. Yeah? Call the police. Oh, don't be silly. Call, please. Use earplugs. You have them. I can't stand it. I can't stand here, it anymore. Here, please. here. Now, now, now. You, you'll be fine. You'll be fine. It's just your imagination. Now, who knows why the dogs are making like banshees tonight? They're dogs, not people. Uh, look, take this pill and get some sleep, huh? Sleep? Sleep? <laughs> David? David, where are you? In the van. Did you have any breakfast? Hours ago. How do you feel? Well, I guess that pill was what I needed. I haven't slept so soundly in months. Good. And the house is still... I've been watching from here. Every light is burning. Mm -hmm. Edna, whose boxer is that? See him? In the Naaman's lawn. How would I know? Seems like everyone's got one. Well, this one has a white patch on his face. Are you sure? Well, look for yourself. Oh, then it's the Kronheims. I remember them boasting about now that The door's thing. opening. He's coming out. That dog is running right up to... <laughs> he, he killed him. He killed the dog. But he didn't do anything. No gun, nothing. The dog just stopped and rolled over. Now do you believe me? Am I still the over-imaginative housewife with too much time on her hands? Where are you going? To do what you should have done yesterday. Call the police. <laughs> I don't know what to say. It's incredible. They're stupid. You know what they said? No crime's been committed. A dog drops dead, so what? And not a mark on him. All we really have is a, is a feeling, nothing really much to go on. But... There's a whatever it is living right next door to us, and you just... I'll get it. Oh. 
Hi, Dave. Oh, come on in, Herb. It's Herb Kronheim, dear. I thought you both ought to know. I took Sterling over to the vet. Sterling? Yeah, that's what we call him. Their dog. Oh. There was no sign. What do you mean? Just that. Autopsy revealed nothing. The vet says it happens that way sometimes. Apparently healthy dog and poof. That, that thing next door isn't human. Edna. He doesn't eat and he doesn't sleep. And... Yeah, she's not herself, her. Don't say that. Don't ever say that. You know he's a monster. Have you met him, Dave? Uh, well, we, we tried, but, uh, well, he wouldn't let us in. Sociable, he's not. Is he even human? Oh, you're not serious. Well, who do you know who doesn't sleep or eat? Tell me. Well, he must. Oh, of course. No car. How does he get his food? Answer me that. Hmm. Middleton doesn't deliver, does he? Yeah, that's his policy. And he hasn't left the place since he came. Well, he could have walked. I've been watching. He hasn't been outside. <laughs> Edna's imagination is working overtime. Oh, do I imagine the lights? Yeah, we've noticed that, too. What's the matter with you two? There's a reasonable explanation for all this. Like what? Well, I... I... Well, I don't know. Well, that solves everything. All right, so he's eccentric. Just because he's a little different... Different? Does... Well, does that make him a menace? <gasps> Use your heads. And the food? That's nonsense. Edna says that he's And you not... believe her? The next thing she'll be seeing is, is flying saucers landing on Naaman's roof. Herb, Herb, I beg you, see the police. Tell them what's going on. What's going on, for heaven's sake? Dave's right, Edna. They'd laugh me right out of town if I told them we've got a neighbor who doesn't eat or... Hey, wait a minute. Hmm? Yeah, there is a way to lay this whole business to rest. <laughs> so simple. I'm listening. We'll go out to Middleton's. I'll call him. Oh, he has no phone. Oh, that's right. He doesn't believe in the 20th century. Well, I'm coming along. No, no, you're staying right here. You keep watching and keep count. I want to know how many pink flying saucers arrive. As I live and breathe, two live ones, and men yet. What's the deal, gentlemen? Your wife's on strike? Uh, now I know why he left Madison Avenue, or why it left him. You have me at a disadvantage, gentlemen. You are customers, uh, I hope, and you're always right. We're not buying. We're um, just asking for a little information. Oh, what dialogue. Your TV set's getting too much use. Business good? If it gets any better, I'll be a millionaire, and then I'll have to advertise which means the gray flannel set will besiege me with glorious presentations and noxious ideas and sparkling slogans like, uh, Meet Me at Middleton's or MMMMM. Hmm. I know I'm a sucker for asking, but, uh, what does that stand for? Well, I haven't figured it out yet, but it could be Middleton's. Hmm. <laughs> uh, shouldn't we get to it, Dave? Fire away. It's about Naaman. Lives right across from you boys, doesn't he? You know him? Where you're standing is like Times Square. Everybody, sometime or other, passes through Middleton. Well, does he, uh, has he done business with you? Well, that's privileged information. I'm on a par with minister or doctor. Hector, we're serious. When you use my abominable first name, I know you are. Well? Well, why wouldn't he? Do you know of any other food store in this fair and thriving enclave? You haven't answered. I think I have. But when? Dave's wife says he hasn't left the house since he moved in. Well, what goes on here? What's this guy done? Is he one of the public enemies cut me in on the reward, all huh? All right, all right. You've had your fun. Now, how does he get his food? Well, you'll have to listen to a confession. I delivered it last night. Delivered? And you're the guy I who... know, I know. Middleton's policy is no deliveries. So I broke it for once. Go on. Run me out of the profession. Naaman's recuperating from surgery, and I just didn't have the heart. Oh, that's that. I suppose so. Something bugging you? Well, yes and no. Well, he's still weak, I told you. You did, but it's queer anyway. I'm beginning to sound like Edna. Now I know it's time to go. <laughs> This is crazy, you know that? One last try. Get it through your head. We got a neighbor who doesn't want to be one. It's a free country. Just once, and then we'll get a beer at my place, huh? Huh? Satisfied? Wait a second. Give him a... You may enter. 
Uh, uh, m- Mr. Uh, Naiman? It is my identity. Uh, I, I'm, uh, I'm Dave Powell, and, and, and this is Herb Cronheim. Acknowledged. No eyebrows or nose. We, uh, we, we, uh, thought we'd uh, welcome you to Glenville. <laughs> it is customary to offer food. Regret none. Yeah, but, uh, Middleton said he delivered yesterday. Destroyed. Not necessary. Alien energy. Oh. Have you, uh, uh, have you been ill? Is there something we can do? Treatment successful. Physio-mental phase will congeal. Time. Yeah, yeah, well, it it takes a while, even minor surgery. (laughs) Passage was difficult. Alteration. Mr. Naaman, uh, say, do you have a first name? Identity, Naaman. I'll, uh, I'll bet you weren't born here, huh? Verity, compulsion. Huh? Uh, English isn't your native language, is it? Strange, compulsion, compulsion. What's he saying? How should I know? Trauma, passage, alteration, compulsive verity. Uh, uh, may I ask where you're from? Distant. Uh, how far? Your term, years. I don't follow. Light years. You believe it? Why not? It's a gag. You think he'd tell us if he was from... Mr. Naaman, uh, w- will you explain why you have all the lights on in your house? Illumination. Nourishment. Energy source. Passage aberration. Physician, therapy, illumination, time... I'm beginning to get it. He needs light like we need food. Maybe that's his food. Physician, sanguine, therapy, time, precedent. The doctors think that after a while he'll recover, that th- th- this hasn't happened before. Hey, let's get out of here. Reclamation suspended. Restoration. Time. Reclin. Sleep. That's what he means. Something went cockeyed and his body requires no sleep. Dave, I'm begging you. Come on. Well, don't you realize what this... Uh, never mind. Uh, Naaman, uh, listen, uh, tell us where you came from. What planet? Tell us. Describe it. Prohibited instruction. Where? This galaxy? Compulsion. Compulsion. Verity. Naaman, we're friends. Trust us. We're friends. We understand. Computation. Figures translated into our system of numbers. Verity, 17. The lights. They're all off. The switch. Let's try it. The fuse must have gone. Overloaded. Ah, lights are back on. Must have been uh, the line in the... Where's Naaman? Well, he must be around here. Naaman? Naaman? Oh, maybe he's in the kitchen. Dave. He was standing right there. Look. Huh? Huh? Oh. No. Oh. Nothing there now but a pile of dust. Naaman! Naaman! <laughs> it was the only thing I could do, Your Intelligence. I know, I know, but it was not my error. Now, this is the first time the transmission has not delivered a healthy specimen. Even the name he took was a reflection of his resentment about the transfer. Yes, yes, a most antisocial attitude, your intelligence. Oh, I've already indicated that the speech relay is faulty. Most of all, he had a compulsion to tell the truth and was about to... I tried to explain that he must keep food in plain sight even if our metabolism does not require any. Business, your intelligence? It's terrible. Isn't that wonderful? We have 48 families in Glenville that no longer consume any food. It won't be long before Middleton's will be able to go out of business. Then the second step of the master plan can get underway. The 
5 has presented The Neighbor, written by Saul Panitz and directed by Warren Somerville. In the cast, Bryna Rayburn, Ralph Camargo, Felice Camargo, Lon Clark, and Louis Van Ruten. Audio engineer, Marty Folia. Sound technician, Ed Blaney. Script editor, Jack C. Wilson. Original music by Alexander Vlasdotsenko. Orchestra under the direction of Glenn Osser. Executive producer for Theater 5, Edward A. Byron. We invite your comments. Write to Theater 5, New York 23, New York. This is Fred Foy speaking.